Hi everyone, it's Johnny Seed here again. About that. Hi everyone, it's Johnny Seed here again. Uh, welcome back to another video. And today I thought I'd just go through some of my latest pickups, um, some of the vinyl records which I've received uh, through the post or what I bought from charity shops or the market in December and November. But first, I'd like to ask a question and seek a bit of advice. Uh, I'm after a new record player, a new hi-fi system. You may have noticed if you've watched any of my videos that you've never seen the, uh, the turntable that I've been using to play things on, which is just over here to my left. Um, it's not particularly because I'm embarrassed about it, although I am embarrassed about it. <laughs> um, I'll explain, shall I? Uh, so I bought, my I bought this record player, which I own now. Uh, probably about five years ago when I was selling uh, records on eBay and I just needed something to test them on. Uh, I didn't have a lot of money to spend. I got it from a charity shop. I think it was about a tenner. It's a 1970s all-in-one thing. I'll, I'll cut in some footage of it now. All right, so this is the record player uh, up close. Uh, the uh, I guess this is the brand MC5. Not what I'm aware of. It's got a, quite a cool radio on here at the minute, which I don't think works. Uh, let's just select radio. Oh, there we go. Oh, right, yeah. Radio still works. And FM. This is the long wave. Not much happening on long wave these days. And medium wave. Etc. Don't know what AR. AFC and frequencies, don't we? Anyway, uh, let's, let's, let's <laughs> turn it off. Uh, okay, and flip up the lid, and as you can see, there uh, is some sliders. Uh, it's a bit of a dusting. So we have uh, treble and bass, and volume left and right, and, and a tape deck. So, yeah, uh, not great. Uh, direct drive, no belts. So, um, uh, yeah, definitely in need of an upgrade. Thing. and it, it was okay at the time like I said I only bought it just to test out records to make sure they weren't scratched anyway um, and it was subsequently from doing that which I which rekindled my interest in, in listening to vinyl again so um, but it's, it's on its last legs now and it's finally conking out I mean it wasn't great to begin with the, the sound quality wasn't amazing uh, it was just a practical thing really just to have a, a working turntable so I need a new one and my question is should I buy a, a new new one or should I buy a old new one if that makes any sense should I go for some vintage something 80s or 90s even uh, you know second hand um, but still in good condition uh, or should I get something that's brand new off the shelf I don't know um, if you've got any opinions upon this or some advice you can give me then please let me know I like the look of the old ones the aesthetic of like 70s and 80s hi-fi equipment um, but I'm just a bit worried that I'll get it and it'll just conk out because I mean all the parts in there are probably going to be 30 to 40 years old uh, I'll just say that my budget is only going to be about 200 quid um, I don't need speakers, uh, I've got these Technic speakers which I think are fine and I want to get a separate thing, I want to get an amp and a uh, turntable. So uh, what would you recommend? Vote down below or tell me what you think. Uh, new or old, uh, what would you prefer? Um, I will either go on Amazon and buy a new one or I'll go on eBay and try and get an old one. Alright, so on to the records. Uh, this is the stuff I've picked up in the last uh, month or so. <coughs> Right, first of all we have Red Novo. You may remember I got a Red Novo 10 inch album in my jazz hall uh, from the summer. Uh, this is uh, Mr. Swing on Swing House Records. This is from 1980. Uh, it's a limited edition of 3,000 copies. So it's already a collector's item. And uh, this one is number 239. I wonder if you can see that there. Um, I've not had a chance to play this yet. Uh, because I just, as I've just said, my record player is conked out. <laughs> so I think I'm going to wait until I get the new one before I play anything on, on here, on there. Um, it's got quite a nice looking silver label. If you can see that, it's not, being, it's not picking up too much glare. Um, the actual vinyl itself is in very good condition, it's quite thin. Uh, it's not got a lot of give to it. And this has got on tracks Blue Skies, Purple Feathers, uh, bass on the bar room floor uh, in a melatone um, that's all one word in a melatone and flying home and on the other side seven come eleven which switch which uh, lang lagwood walk the sergeant of furlough 
and two marvellous for words. So I'm not sure when they were when the recordings were made. Let's see if it says on here. Uh, blah 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 blah. 943. Some of these were recorded. So this is stuff from the 40s. So as you don't know, Mr. Mr. Novo is a, a vibes player. Right, I finally got a copy of Rumours. Uh, this is actually for another video I'm going to be doing, and so I won't go into it too much in minutes, but you all know what the album is, I'm sure. Um, this is a 1977 release, I've been assured, and I've looked it up, and I can't see anything that would indicate otherwise. It's not a first pressing, obviously. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't come with the, um, with the inner sleeve and the lyric booklet. Um, but yeah, in great condition, and a really good album, as you all know. So you'll be seeing this one again soon. Okay, 12 inch, this is Beatmasters, uh, featuring the Cookie Crew, Rock the House. I uh, really like this style of uh, electro from the 80s. Electro dance music, this is Rock the House, produced and mixed by the Beatmasters. And on the other side we have a Latin Beat remix, and a Junes remix. It actually came with a sleeve, and it's on Rhythm King. Uh, got a few things on Rhythm King. And this is from, I'm going to guess the year, 85 was it? Um, 87, alright, oh, okay, 87. Okay, Def Leppard, Pyromania. I got this off the market. There was a new guy who uh, rocked up in the last couple of weeks. Um, selling some really good stuff at some good prices, uh, around about the five, six pound mark. So I grabbed this one. Uh, I'm sure I've heard it, I'm, it's not one I'm super familiar with. I mean, I was really into Def Leppard when um, Hysteria came out, as I'm sure everybody else was at that age. Uh, <laughs> they were kind of one of the gateway bands to uh, heavier, heavier things. I think Mark G has maybe mentioned these. So, um, Photograph I'm aware of, the track. Yeah, I do know that one. But as far as this being an album, uh, not something I've listened to a lot of. So I'm going to be giving this one some more spindulation when I get a new setup. This is on Vertigo. Okay, and don't laugh, ABBA, <laughs> Greatest Hits Volume 2. Uh, I've been after some ABBA for a while actually. Um, I heard, and I'm going to have to do, look this up to see if this is true, but when they were recording, they had a technique where they would double track everything. So normally um, musicians and vocalists would double track the vocal. I know John Lennon, that vocal sound, if you, if you don't know what double tracking is, it's basically recording the same thing twice, but you do two takes of the same thing and get it to match up, uh, as opposed to just copying one track. Um, for stereo, so you get slight variations um, in the. Oh, I'm not entirely sure how it works electronically, but there's the minute variations which give you a, a nice, warm, a, a fuller sound anyway. And I heard that the um, the ABBA would, and I'm, I'm sure quite a lot of other artists did this in the same way. They double track everything, so they double track the drums, they double track the bass, and the piano, and the guitar, and that's where you get that big, big 70s sound. So I was just curious as to hear what it sounded like. Uh, on vinyl and also uh, some fantastic songs on here. I know Abra may be a little bit sort of maligned with the Mamma Mia kind of uh, thing <laughs> that's been going on but you can't deny good songwriting. Uh, well I got anyway and um, this one, I, they had volume one in the in this charity shop where I grabbed this from and that had things like Waterloo on it um, but this had more, this had the songs on it which I actually like uh, for example um, Dancing Queen is good, uh, what's the one? Does Your Mother Know? Great song that. Dubious lyrics, but the melody and the, it's just a songwriting really that I really like from Abba. Um, Dancing Queen, Does Your Mother Know? Chikikitwa? <laughs> Chikikita? I remember that being in the charts actually. Uh, Summer Night City, I'm not that familiar with. I Wonder, Departure, don't know. Uh, the Name of the Game, of course I know that one. And Thank You for the Music, yeah it's alright, a bit schmaltzy. Gimme Gimme Gimme, A Man After Midnight is good. Knowing Me, Knowing You, Aha is, is a good track. Uh, Take a Chance on Me is good, Money Money Money. So yeah, don't laugh, but uh, I quite like some ABBA now and again. And I was uh, interested in to hear what it sounds like on vinyl. Uh, it is a good fall. Yeah, I mean, this, I see ABBA albums everywhere actually in charity shops, so... Um, I don't know, has anybody out there who's heard any other albums as opposed to greatest hits? Are they, are they good deep cuts band? Let me know if so. And I managed to finally get a copy of McCartney 2. This is uh, again from the market. And another Bandied Fold. I had this on cassette uh, back whenever, back for as long as I remember. Uh, but I thought I'd, when I saw it on vinyl, I thought I'm having that. 
here's the label on the polyphone. Right, and finally, uh, I was incredibly excited to find this. Uh, this is Gorilla by the Bonzo Dog Band, uh, aka the Bonzo bon Bonzo Bonzo Dog Doodah -do Band. Um, so yeah, uh, I really like Bonzos. Uh, it does say on the back of here, Gorilla dedicated to Kong, who must have been a great bloke. Uh, very uh, substantial humour. Unfortunately, this isn't the original version. Uh, this is a Sunset re-release, Sunset Records. Probably came out, I think, maybe a year or two after the original. The original one is worth quite a bit, actually. Well, you know, reason, relatively speaking. Um, but this is a fairly common uh, reissue. Um, it's got here, Cool Britannia, the equestrian statue, Jollity Farm. I left my heart in San Francisco, look out. There's a monster coming. Jazz, delicious hot, disgusting cold. Death Cab for Cutie, which is where the band got the name from. And Narcissus, and on side two, we have the intro and the outro. Uh, Mickey's son and daughter, Big Shot. Music for a head ballet, piggy bank love, I'm bored, and the sound of music. But wonderfully eccentric 60s bizarreness. So there's a sunset label. Okay, that's it uh, for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and come back next time for more things. Bye!